So the agenda for today uh, is really to start with uh, our vision and mission. Uh, we're then going to jump over to an overview, uh, overview of SANA and a demo of the platform. Uh, and then we're going to finish off with how our partners use SANA. So as you might have realized, uh, we're already in the SANA platform. We're in the SANA live virtual classroom experience. And I wanted to start with just a few ground rules for the session today. Uh, so feel free to use emojis to react to ideas and comments. Uh, you have them at the bottom of the screen. At the bottom of the screen, you also um, have the ability to raise your hand. So if you want to ask a question or if you want to comment on something, feel free to raise your hand and I'll give you the word. Uh, and then, of course, feel free to use the chat to ask questions or respond to threats. And there, Harry and Jenny will be moderating the session as well. Before we get started and jump into all of the content, um, we wanted to understand uh, what your name and role is and what brought you to this session. So if you uh, want to add that into this white text box and hit submit, uh, I will uh, get a sense of why you're here and can then adapt the session accordingly. So we're just going to give everyone a minute here. I can see that people are writing frantically. And we're so happy that we have so many people joining in here today. We have Hakan joining out of curiosity. That's a super good reason to join. And uh, we have our friend at uh, the Chief Learning Officer at Novartis who've written a book on the uh, curiosity advantage. Uh, which is what he argues is the way that companies build sustainable competitive advantage. Um, we have Karen joining the, uh, because we're doing great stuff within training, but don't really know what Sana is doing. So I'll try to demystify that for sure. Ryan wants to improve the training for the sales team. Uh, Anna is also curious. Um, we have Bex, who's the learning and development manager starting a new organization. Need a modern take on an LMS to engage the people. You've come to the right place for sure. Um, lots of curious, curiosity around SANA. So we're going to try to demystify that during today's session. Uh, so I'm just going to give you 20 more seconds and then we'll get going. Want to know more things about SANA? Super. You've come to the right place. Uh, so I'm going to move on now to the next part of this presentation. So sorry for those of you who didn't have time to submit your responses. Um, so before we go into the actual product, I wanted to give you a little bit of background to the company, our vision and mission. So SANA is a Stockholm-based learning technology company, and the company was founded 2016. We today have our headquarters in Stockholm, but we also have offices in London and open up, opening up in New York uh, towards the end of this year. We're 65 people today, but growing really quickly. And the SANA company was founded on this vision that everything really starts with learning. All the human advancements, that starts with learning, but also building sustainable competitive advantage for companies, that starts with learning. And if we can leverage advancements in technology, in machine learning, we believe that we can significantly improve how learning is being created and delivered for organizations. And especially now with the advancements of generative AI that we've been working with for the past four or five years, we're really at this inflection point for how humanity accesses information, uh, similar really to what happened with the printing press in the 15th uh, century. Uh, and we believe that we're at the pole position to really win this market. Uh, but if we look at how learning technology stacks looks today in corporations and the customers that we work with, uh, we see a number of pain points that really hold back the potential of the category uh, and the people that are interacting with those systems equally much. So first and foremost, it's usually a very fragmented e ecosystem where companies uh, leverage a more admin-focused LMS. They might have an authoring tool, 
and a PowerPoint. They deliver trainings through Zoom, uh, which is not very engaging. So they add a Mentimeter, they record it, and they add it to SharePoint, which becomes super fragmented. Those systems are also usually very static. They're single player oriented. And to be frank, they're also very outdated from a user experience point of view. Uh, so what we wanted to do with SANA is to provide an all-in-one learning and knowledge sharing experience that covers the entire value chain of training for organizations, where we focus a lot on personalizing recommendations for every employee to help them at every point in their career. We're also focusing a lot on the collaborative aspects of training. So not only putting people through online learning, but letting people learn from each other and with each other in an environment like this, but also in self-paced training experiences. And then the last piece is, of course, how this full experience can be powered by AI to make content creation process much more seamless and the consumption process much more uh, efficient as well. And with that, the platform that we have um, is something that we call SANA. As mentioned, it's one home for all of your company learning. And it spans the entire value chain of uh, training for corporations. And we usually describe the product with five different uh, components. The first component is SANA Create. So this is our content creation tool that makes it extremely easy to create high quality, interactive, social content. It's a fully collaborative experience where you can work very easily together with your peers or subject matter experts to really bring out all of the knowledge of the organization. This experience is also fully AI powered, which means that you can leverage the SANA assistant to help write paragraphs, generate questions, or even generate entire courses. Uh, to let you focus on what really matters. So that's the content creation experience. The second part of SANA is what we call SANA Learn. And this is the distribution layer of the platform. So this is where you can distribute all of the training to your employees or to your customers, uh, where we focus on the recommendations, uh, where each employee, when they come into the platform, they will see the most relevant content for them. They can enroll in different learning programs and they can sign up to live sessions such as this one. The third component is our search capabilities. And this is something that we're investing a lot of resources into at the moment. So SANA's search is not only a place where you can find the most relevant course that is host, housed in SANA, it actually helps you answer uh, questions that you might have in the flow of work. Uh, so we have a chat GPT like experience for all of your learning content, but we can also connect this experience to external apps, meaning that SANA becomes the home screen for anything learning or knowledge related. The fourth area is what we call SANA Live. It's this virtual classroom that we're sitting in today that can drive much more engaging and inclusive learning, where we're leveraging free text reflection cards or polls or sliding scales, as you saw. But we also record this session. We automatically transcribe the sessions as well and make them searchable after the session has been held, which means uh, that the value of training sessions um, get extended in time. And then the last piece is more of the management capabilities of the platform. So more your typical LMS um, capabilities where you can automate enrollments, you can build onboarding programs, you can follow up on learning progress and segment uh, the content that you have in your organization. So with that said, we wanted to jump in and do a little bit more of an in-depth uh, demo. Uh, but before going there, I wanted to ask Harry if there's any questions that we should answer at this point. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat, so uh, feel free to to uh, continue on, or if anyone has any any quick questions, uh, just feel free to free to write them in the chat. 
Feel free to add them in the chat. Uh, I'll pause in just uh, a few minutes again, and then we can uh, pick up on any questions that might have been asked uh, in the meantime. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen to one of the uh, demo environments that I have here. Uh, so what you're seeing right now is the home screen of the SANA platform. This is where I will receive personalized recommendations based on my role, based on what I've consumed in the past, or maybe what's been mandated by the organization that I should learn. Um, at the side here, you also see a number of other components. So I can jump into my library to find all of the training content in the organization. I can jump into the content creation tool in SANA to share any learnings that I might have found in my role. And I can also jump into the manage section. Um, on the right here, you see again the home screen uh, where we do have a number of recommendations uh, that I'm being met with uh, as an employee. Um, here, we're basing this again on my user attributes and what I've learned in the past but also what peers and other colleagues might, might have found useful in the past. This can be both self-paced training experiences. Uh, it can be live sessions such as this one, but we can also aggregate content from external sources. For example, LinkedIn Learning. If your organization has subscription to uh, other content libraries, we can uh, be the aggregator of all of that training content. Uh, this is also where you easily can categorize all of the content to make it easy to find the information. So as I mentioned, uh, if someone comes into SANA and they have a question that they run into in their everyday work, they can simply type that question to the SANA search system and they will not only receive search results of relevant courses or documents, uh, but you will also receive an answer to your question. So in this case, I might have been onboarded to SANA a few weeks ago, and I learned about the concept uh, called, uh, called DRI. Uh, but now I might have forgotten what is actually DRI uh, about and what does it stand for? I can ask SANA, what is a DRI? And here the SANA assistant will provide me with an answer to my question. So here it says DRI stands for Directly Responsible Individual. It's a framework used at SANA for decision-making and accountability. So super, I have the answer to my question. You can imagine that this search functionality can be used for any type of uh, question that your employees run into in the flow of work. So it might be something around a product that you're trying to sell uh, or a customer service that wants to find quickly. Uh, how to uh, resolve a specific problem that the employees are running into. As you see, we can uh, not only provide search results from the SANA platform, you can also connect this search experience to external platforms such as Google Drive, Slack, GitHub, Salesforce, or even Microsoft Teams. So there's a wide variety of platforms that you can connect here, meaning that SANA becomes this home screen for learning. If I wanted to uh, jump into one of the trainings that in this case is actually overdue, uh, SANA's company handbook, uh, I can just press here and I get into the learning experience of SANA. Uh, this is a very flexible experience where you as content creators or L&D teams or business teams can uh, create uh, many different kinds of learning experiences. Uh, so we can, of course, have video material as a part of those trainings, where we introduce what SANA is about. But we can also have those more social aspects for training, where people can share their experiences and create more of this social feeling as I'm consuming this content. Uh, you can adapt and format this content in an infinite number of ways. Uh, and I'll jump into the content creation tool just shortly as well. So this, this is just quickly how the learner user experience looks like when you consume content. And again, there's many different ways that you can set this up. So if I now wanted to create uh, some new training content, uh, I can just press here, new. 
uh, then uh, I can either start from scratch or I can use one of the pre-existing templates that uh, you get as a customer of SANA. We have around 100 templates or ready-made courses that you can use either off the shelf as they are, or you can adapt them to align with your company's processes. Those templates span any topic from onboarding, leadership development, sales enablement, compliance, product management, and more. But in this case, I might want to teach our employees on how to communicate more effectively in an online environment. So then I can just choose this course, and then I get into this editor experience. And this is where I build all of the training content in SANA. So I have my sidebar here where I have um, where I have the structure of the content that I'm building. Uh, and then on the right hand side, I have the actual editor. Um, so here it's very easy to uh, change the content. I might want to add an image here. Uh, I get automatic uh, suggestions as well, uh, which is based on generative uh, models. I can add new cards. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to add a question towards the second module here, uh, I can just press question. And then I could generate a new question as well. That is going to be based on all of the training content that I'm added here in SANA. So this module is about pre-flight checks. And the question that I got suggested to me is, which of the following are good techniques for framing a shot? So that seems to be highly relevant. And here I can also very easily uh, interact with my peers and ask, is this a good question? Uh, to make it very seamless uh, to, to create the content and collaborate with peers, with subject matter experts. And once I'm done, I can just simply publish the content and then share it with more people in the organization. So that's quickly on the home screen, the general navigation of the platform, how to consume content, and how to create content and how to search for trainings or knowledge. I wanted to quickly cover also some of the more administrative components of the SANA platform. But before doing so, I want to check with Harry again if there's any questions that we should address. Uh, so Alex had an interesting question. I, I'm, I think I answered his, uh, his first one uh, with the personalized sort of um, per person training, uh, depending on size of company. But he was wondering as well um, how it works when when he would like to embed the platform with uh, into an LMS system. Yeah, um, so there is a possibility for individual courses uh, to be added to external LMSs um, with the SCORM standard uh, with a SCORM connector. Uh, so that's one way to integrate with an LMS. We also have API-based connectors. However, when the SANA platform works the best is when SANA can be the end-to-end -end learning platform for your organization, because that's when you can leverage all of the uh, synergies that we get from having the content creation tool in the same system as the LMS, for example, uh, which makes the content more uh, searchable. Perfect. Uh, another interesting question here from uh, from from Ryan uh, asking really how how pricing works. You know, is it per seat or or if you'd like to go into that, Samuel? Yeah. So it's a per seat uh, subscription model, uh, quite classic uh, software as a service model. And uh, there's more information on our website, and we can jump into more of the details uh, afterwards as well. Um. So. In the interest of time, we have some really good questions here. I'm going to proceed just to show you a little bit more around the administrative sides of the platform. And then if we have uh, time towards the end, we'll take a few more questions. Otherwise, I'll trust Harry and Jenny to answer them in the chat as well. Mm, so just quickly on the management side of SANA. So SANA is really made to make it super easy to automate all of the assignments, user administration, and content deployment that you have uh, in your organization. So if we talk about it from an internal training perspective, uh, we almost always integrate with HR systems 
or with identity providers such as uh, Microsoft uh, Active Directory uh, or Okta. This is where all user accounts are typically sent from into the SANA system, such that we get uh, the users always up to date, you always have the current employees in SANA. This is also where we get uh, user attributes, and user attributes are really key to any automation that you want to do in SANA. Uh, so one example might be that you want to run some ad hoc analysis uh, of training um, analytics for people that are part of the design engineering or product function and is based in Stockholm. Then I can head over to the people tab in SANA. I can make this selection and I can bring up what we call a heat map. So this is a super easy way for you to get a number of users that you wanna understand if they've completed some training and then bring up a number of training items that you wanna report on. This is also a view that managers can get of their team. So they can quickly follow up on progress among their team members for different training programs that you're rolling out. Those user attributes can also be used for a number of other use cases. So one way would be to uh, create what we call a smart group. So if you wanna get back to this selection later, or if you wanna do some automation or reporting with this, we can also create a smart group, uh, which will then always be updated uh, if those user attributes are updated in the HR system or in the identity provider. So I wanna create a group here with the people in design engineering product that are based in Stockholm. It's very easy for me to do. And then I have an always up-to-date view of those people. I can also, uh, similarly to what I could do on the user level, I can also bring up heat maps for comparing different groups. So let's say that you decentralize the ownership for uh, onboarding or compliance training and you wanna follow up on the completion of those training content, you can easily compare different groups and send this out as reports to, for example, general managers of different functions or geographies in, uh, in the company. You can also build something that we call learning programs. And learning programs are pre-configured um, assignment of content that you wanna roll out with a certain interval. Uh, a common use case for this uh, is onboarding. So it might be that you, at the first day of the employee's employment, want to send out a welcome email and a first training course. That is something that you can automate as part of training programs. And then maybe you want to, two days after, assign additional content. Uh, four days after, you want to get some more content. Then you can build those entire uh, programs as a part of the SANA, SANA system. Uh, and once you're done with creating the structure, you can also then build out what we call enrollment rules, uh, which makes it possible for you to define when, on which date will this program start. And this can also be based on user attributes that the user has. So in this case, we're actually starting the program on the start date of the employee, which means that this will be dynamic based on the start date of every employee. So you can set that all on autopilot. Uh, this is just, of course, a glimpse into the capabilities of the managed side of SANA. And there's much more uh, you can do in the SANA platform. Uh, in terms of the use cases that our partners would typically run as a part of the platform, uh, this would span also a number of different areas. Anything from running engaging and inspiring leadership programs, maybe for first time managers, and you wanna e equip everyone with the right skills and tools when they are managers. That's a very common use case. Onboarding, as we already touched on, is also a common use case in SANA. Sales enablement and sales training is something that most of our partners would uh, run. Uh, we, of course, also have compliance trainings being commonly run as a part of the SANA platform. And then 
the fifth side uh, is more the external training use case. That's something that is very common as well. Uh, we have a lot of customers that do hybrid setup with both internal and external training. Some partners would do just the external training. And this can be anything from partner enablement, customer training, uh, customer onboarding, et cetera. Uh, so with that said, uh, we are coming to the close of this session. Uh, Harry, are there any questions that we should address before the end of this, or is it better that we come back after? I think that it, it, maybe we come back to this after uh, at this point. Okay, the... yeah, we're running out of time. Uh, good, yeah. I've heard a few uh, questions come in. Um, so before we end for today, uh, of course, this is just a very uh, quick overview of the capabilities of the platform and the company. Uh, but we want to understand from your side, uh, if you would uh, want to speak more with someone at SANA, if you're open to receiving more information or if you're good at the moment, feel free to react to this poll. You just press one of the images. We will be staying on for a few more minutes. Uh, we can address some of the questions uh, that have come in. Uh, but since we're coming to the close of this session, I just wanted to thank everyone so much for participating in the session.